Welcome, Tony. Yay. Thank you so much. Is everyone close to your mouth? Okay. Close, close. Hi, everyone. Hi, Tony. You know, I probably seen you guys one in judging when I judged the show here. And then, you know, uh, I probably see you at Redlands. I probably see you at Tammy uh, at all the major orchid shows, right? And you think, well, you know what? I would really by now try to be able to attach a name to a face. But that still doesn't happen. So, <laughs> I, I still can't do that quite yet. But welcome guys, and you know, thanks for having me. I tell people, I tell people all the time, I love coming north. I live in Fort Lauderdale, and going into Miami, to me, is the biggest nightmare there is. <laughs> coming north, it used to be a whole lot easier, right? Yeah. Oh my goodness, but now I think the HOV lane, and the, 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 the other paid lane that you get into, what do they call it? High traffic or express lane. Even that sometimes is backed up. In the last year, uh, goodness. So it seems as if the traffic is just migrating further north and north and north and north. And anyway, uh, this morning wasn't so bad at all. I got stuck a little bit around West Palm and the rest of that. And the rest was a piece of cake. And I still enjoy coming north of, let's see, let's call it Lauderdale, okay? <laughs> All right, so today, today's going to be interesting one because, guys, I, I probably only know two operations in, in, um, in, 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 in uh, you know, trying to operate the, the laptop, right? And every time I think I'm on top of it, guess what? They come out with a new version. <laughs> so if I mess up a little bit, if you could uh, turn on my PowerPoint. Hold on. Yeah, let, let's get to here. I can't get there because you have a oh, code. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and here is PowerPoint. <laughs> and here is okay so that's the presentation only about maybe a year and a half probably two years or so ago I was accredited, accredited judge it took seven years to get there oh god I could have been an MD doctor making a hell of a lot more money <laughs> what was I think I have no idea. But you know, when you love what you do, um, you know, uh, uh, my, my mother raised orchids, and I would forever followed her uh, all the time, probably from an age of four or five or so. And so, it is a true passion, and you know, once you love them, you will forever love them, and that's just the way it is. Oh, now I'm thinking how many hundreds of killed, right? <laughs> so today's presentation is going to be on small Cattleya species and their hybrids. The last uh, uh, presentation I did here was the extreme. For, for you folks to remember, it was large cats. And when I say large cats, I am talking about uh, you know, the flowers were definitely over six inches. Some of them were nine, ten inches across. It was all breeding. And, uh, you know, that kind of style is going out of fashion. It's not as fashionable as it used to be anymore. Well, why? Could anyone have a reason why those large cats, uh, and the plants are big themselves. The plants are huge. They like three feet across, five feet across. A great judging friend of mine, wonderful, the plants are out there. She's all of about 95 pounds. 
and she loves those cats. She could only lift the flowers, okay? <laughs> That's about all she can do because these things, you have to be a sumo wrestler, not only that too, <laughs> But you really have to have a friend that's a chiropractor as well. Yes. Okay? So, but she loves them, and, and that's what she grows. What could I tell you? So here we are. I used to grow in New York, and I had some of those large cats. And then they became, you see, I tell people all the time, be careful what you wish for with orchids. You just might get it. When, when an organ is happy, you will be terrorized. Okay? You'll be terrorized by the weight, you'll be terrorized by the size, what to uh, by the size, you'll be terrorized by having to repot it twice a year. Repotting folks has gotten so expensive. You will pay more to repot uh, 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 in an eight to ten inch uh, plastic pot than sometimes the plant is worth. It's repotting is gotten very, very expensive. So, with that in mind, I'm going to introduce you to some plants that some of them are only about three inches tall. Others are about maybe five inches tall, and very few of them are six inches and above. <coughs> Repotting is not going to be that issue because some of the roots of these smaller guys do not go as deep as a bob bats, if you guys know what I mean. Bob bats is that huge white flower that <laughs> you've seen it a million times. Beautiful. Bridal parties use that, but um, the plant just gets, the plant gets like almost half of this table, and, and it's out of control, okay? So I'll show you some new material. I'll show you some stuff that you probably sometimes have seen, and uh, you know, uh, you will tell me if you've seen them before, if you like them or not, or not. So, all right, uh, wake it up, wake it up, okay. Okay, so this is the species um, section of, of the talk. And by species we mean these are the plants that occur in nature, not with Tony's hands, okay? Don't blame me. This is the way they occur in nature. And uh, the species are usually the friendly ones. Uh, why? Because as people, sometimes we don't like to be alone, but you're not alone. We all can feel the same way too, right? They like to be pollinated by the birds and the bees, and they move on to the next generation. But the species are temperature tolerant. So they have a wider range, meaning you could grow them uh, often enough anywhere from, let's say, St. Augustine all the way down to South Florida. So I think St. Augustine sometimes gets a bit of a frost, you know? And you can grow them all the way to Miami. So they can take a wide, wide range of temperature from in the low 50s sometimes, uh, all the way up to like 90 or so. They're very high tolerant, so high light tolerant. So they could take a lot of light. And boy, if you want light, I think Florida is the place to be, and South Florida is even more so. Frequent bloomers, they bloom more than once a year. They will bloom probably two, sometimes three times a year. Uh, these species I'm going to show you. They're strong growers. They grow very, very strong. They're tough. They come in many different colors. Whites, pinks, blue, uh, greens, yellows, uh, purples. Uh, they're not hard to find, although a lot of nurseries nowadays are going out of business. Someone just told me that 
Floralia uh, uh, is going out of business. They were not at Tamiami. Several of the vendors that I usually see were not at Tamiami yesterday. So, uh, and they can be can be very very fragrant as well. Okay, hold on. If I turn this a little bit, can I? Sure. Okay. So let's start off with Cattleya Schillerianna. And Schillerianna is on the table back there. Uh, I, I bought one. It's, uh, it's got a lot of spotting, if you like spotting. That's a good feature. It's got that wonderful edged lip. So the, that lip is totally edged in white. Uh, it's got that going for it. It's got sort of like a bronzy kind of a, a background color as well. And then in the middle of the lip, you have that yellow. Uh, it's a very fragrant species. Not big. It's, it's anywhere from maybe, I'm going to say, well, the one I have is maybe like four inches to about six inches. So, and that kind of sets the pace for the presentation, okay? So, you could just assume that everything that I'm showing you here is almost never going to get up to eight, ten inches uh, kind of a plant, okay? And typically, uh, they will be a hell of a lot easier to repot. So this, folks, is Cattleya schilleriana. When we go on and show you some of the hybrids, you will see that those spots come through. They come through in the next generation when you breed with them, okay? You see that lip? That lip comes through as well. Two really nice features uh, in the plant. Okay. Oh boy, I'm going up with my hand. This is Cattleya Walkeriana. And who has Walkeriana? Everyone does, no? no? No. You have Walkeriana, okay. What an easy plant. I think I brought one on the table back there. I think it's already gone. It's blue. It is uh, Cattleya Walkeriana Monte Azul, Cerulea. It's been awarded. So it has like 86 uh, uh, points, 88 points. For the flower. You're seeing the identical flower pretty much here on your screen. However, the one I bought is blue. Even better, but it comes in white, it comes in red, it comes in dark red as well. Uh, it does not come in yellow. So you folks who are looking for yellow, no. Uh, I don't think the breeding of this would even uh, consider yellow. Uh, you see this lip here? This is dominant. This lip here is very, very dominant. No matter what other plant that you select to be the mother or the father of the next generation, that lip tend to dominate. Okay? Let's move on to the next slide. Uh, okay. <coughs> Okay, this is Cattleya aloreae, and uh, I think, no, I didn't bring any aloreae. It's only so big. That's about it. The flower, so big. Large, large flower. This comes basically in dark pink. It comes in light pink, and it comes, as you're seeing it here, white extremely fragrant. Uh, it's now beginning to get popular amongst hobbyists, uh, you know, and, 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 and breeders. I don't know if you can really see here, but it has a lot, a lot of sparkle. You see it, you're seeing it here? You're seeing it, how the sparkle is showing up? Yeah. A beautiful, beautiful little plant like we talked about that we're going to be seeing more of. Uh, okay. 
this is nobilia and you're going to say well didn't you just show us that one no because what i showed you was wakariana uh and wakariana may remember we talked about the lip remember we watched wakariana lip this has the same <laughs> style of lip but look at the color just look at that color and this here is more trumpety it pushes back pretty much a beautiful beautiful uh plant that is about five inches tall that's the plant itself the flower really doesn't get up looking the flower kind of goes to the side and then it shows up like that okay a uh, beautiful very beautiful wakariana would bloom maybe three times a year definitely twice a year this guy's kind of finicky it will bloom for you once a year and that's it but we can make some hybrids that would kind of nudge it a little bit to step up to the other level right <laughs> so we take a, a, a look at, at those as well a very 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 beautiful plant it comes in white it comes in blue it comes in dark uh, rubra kind of and it also comes in pink as well Okay, let's go. The Aureola. Uh, Which one? Aureoli. That white one. Yeah. Oh, Aloreai? Yeah. Uh, no, no. No? Exactly. Th this one? Yeah. Okay, we'll take a look. We'll take a, li but, uh, a look at this one while we have it up. This is Prestance. This plant is about maybe three inches tall or so. Not a very big plant. The flower is large. I took this shot of it only so that you could see how much, how big the flower is compared to the pot. That's a shallow pot. And the lip almost touches the bottom of the pot. And the petal span is very, very, very wide. It comes in white. It comes in blue, cerulean as well. Uh, very powerfully fragrant. And you get you get a really dark, and I like to call it mango color, right in the throat, and and all those properties are dominant. Sometimes you know we think size is dominant, right? I mean you know you see uh, you see the big old Barbats and you see the big old Trianis and Lebiadas and uh, all uh, that kind of thing, and they could get up to this tall easily but their flowers sometimes are not really that matched with the height of the plant you see so you have this tall plant here and the flowers may be about so big well this is close to that <coughs> on a much 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 shorter uh, 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 plant itself a beautiful beautiful flower as well Okay, let's see if we could uh, get this back up here. Did I uh, answer that last question? Was that the flower yes, you wanted to yes, see? Thank you. Yeah, that's press dance. Uh, okay, and we just did this one. Well, let's go to this one. Beautiful. And this is Sophronitis coccinia. Um, it is a small plant about so you may get sometimes maybe four inches or so uh, in it the flower look you can't even see the leaves of the plant the flower is that big the flower is an intense color not only intense color but could you see veining in those petals yes right you yes. seeing you seeing the plant almost bleeding blood look Look, the flower is almost bleeding blood. The lip has orange in the lip. A beautiful, beautiful plant. It, a flower, it comes in yellow. And a nice, good, clean yellow as well. Uh, it's not that easy to grow. Especially anywhere, I am going to say, uh, maybe, 
Uh, Synogus, uh, not Synogus scene, uh, uh, Jacksonville. It grows better if you live in Jacksonville, not all the way up, let's say, to, to, to Virginia, but probably to Georgia. Just in that region there, you can get it to grow and flower. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful flower. Small plant, again, large flower, okay? Let's take a look now at the yellow form. I told you about the yellow form, right? And this is the yellow form, not as large and as full as the red form that we saw over here, but still very, very beautiful, beautiful color. It's a lemon rather than an egg yolk yellow. These are all species, guys. And uh, this is Wittigiana, and this is nice too, again, a small plant. This is only about two inches tall. The plant itself, the flower, has got to be, I'm gonna call, three, three and a half inches across. It's a massive flower for the plant. You wonder sometimes how it could even carry that flower. Um, but it does. This is warmer growing. So I'm gonna say this has a range of probably Jacksonville where it's comfortable uh, but you guys you guys get it kind of colder than we do in Fort Lauderdale is that correct or not correct oh yeah yeah you're colder and you're longer so why a longer time that you're cold so it, you know that may work for you but yes uh, with Tikiana, you definitely can grow it will not like it in Miami one bit okay it gets too hot for too long. But however, you, it can grow to Fort Lauderdale so comfortably. Large flower, very large flower for the size plant. Easy grower too. Any questions so far? This is a tiny one. Uh, again, the plant maybe three inches, two inches tall or so. But the flower, the flower is about maybe, maybe two and a half, about two inches the same as well. But it gets covered with, loaded. The plant just gets loaded with these uh, orange uh, flowers. It's an easy grow. It could, this, this you can grow in Miami. So if it could be grown in Miami, it's good for you as well, okay? So, a little plant again, with a good size to large flower. This is a cutie. This is a cutie, and this is Cattleya syncorana. A little bigger, a bigger plant. It's going to be probably about three inches or so. And um, some of them are really dark, a very, very dark blue lip on there. It's an easy grower. It com comes out of Brazil, actually, where it's really warm. So you can grow it uh, all the way down to Miami. And you guys will do it. And all, everything that I've shown you, you guys will do better than the plants that are grown. Miami, uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale, all the way down to Miami, to the Keys. Okay? Because it just, it just gets too unbearingly hot. Uh, during the summer for too long. So they can take heat, but they don't want to take heat over an extended period of time. And remember this last year, 23, I mean, we just went days on end. I don't know if you guys were in the 90s. It was 93, 95, 98, 96, day after day. You can water all you want. They do not like it. They'll put up with it. But God, come October, they're like, thank God it's back. <laughs> Just like us, right? We probably say the same old thing, thank goodness. Here's a cutie pie, and this is only like about two inches uh, tall. That's all it is. And it has these uh, massive, I'll, I'll show you in the slides that are coming up, mass amount of flowers so you don't even see the 
leaves of the plant. Uh, 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 very, very, very friendly, very easy. You can get a plant covered in this, probably the size of that green pot here. And, uh, you know, uh, however, the pot size would be only about maybe two inch pot. It would grow in two inch pot, but then just get covered, covered all the way around. A very friendly plant, it could take a lot of heat. This can take a lot. This definitely can take Miami heat. But very friendly, very nice. By the way, all these species that I'm showing you are, you know, we're now getting the, into them as an orchid growing community. Uh, years ago, you know, orchids were pretty much limited to the big wedding cat leaves, right? Uh, the brides wore all the time. And you hardly ever heard about these guys at all. We're now beginning to, because people cannot afford the large greenhouses that these large cat leaves used to grow in. Uh, uh, not only to build the greenhouse, but also to heat it. Could you imagine when it's 20 degrees or 15 degrees uh, uh, outside, let's say in New York, or probably Jersey too as well, uh, and you have to heat all the way up to 80. That's a big like Bill. You like Bill would love you, okay? So, they kind of went out of favor, is, what really ha is what's really going on as we speak. This is Itambana, and uh, there is a plant of, of it outside that is crossed with Lilliputana and Itambana, the cross, and this is what they, they can do. So you see how that foliage is tiny? That foliage is only like so. That's all it is. And the plant just throws up and just a humongous, jungus, uh bunch of little uh, flowers that are really, really, really uh, pretty for your windowsill. Do we have any people that grow on a windowsill here? I, I used to grow on a windowsill in New York, and they did pretty good. No one? I do. You grow on a windowsill? Okay. I have four, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you have a sunny windowsill, these plants here would love you. Totally love you. Uh, any questions so far? No? Okay. So let's go to Lundii. And Lundii, Lundii is a little bigger. It's probably about maybe three to four inches or so tall, but it gets covered. So a lot of these, you know something? Nature is really, really marvelous, right? The big plants with the big flowers that are in your face and they want to take over, and these little guys must get jealous, right? Don't you think? <laughs> They're like, you know, we're never gonna get tall like those guys. You know, I think Mother Nature messed us up, <laughs> right? But, but then they make up for it because they're so tiny, they put on a show like this and you go, whoa. So they wanna impress you. They really wanna, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, get you to look at them. It's kind of like, Daddy, look at me, I'm tiny, but I, I, that's my dog's attitude. Okay, okay, man, this dog is bigger than me. But, okay. but, but great, really, really, uh, really, really great. This is another one. This is about five inches tall. And this is Cattleya uh, Jongiana, a beautiful plant. This is definitely about five to six inch flower across. The plant itself is probably only about five inches tall. Very perfumey, very flat. It's, it, it's razor flat, as you can see it. And uh, the lip uh, uh, gets like a mango color in here. Very, very beautiful. It comes in alba. It also comes in a very, very darker pink. And this pink that you see here, it's friendly. It will definitely uh, uh, tolerate um, Fort Lauderdale. I don't know if it'll do Miami, though. That may be questionable. OK, so let's take a look at the next one. Oh, and this is Brigarai. You guys must have seen, must have seen Brigarai at some point. Uh, but Brigarai is for any plant that you see with the orange 
and yellow sort of favoring uh, to it has this in its background. Bricker rye itself is a tiny plant. It's only about four inches, five inches tall, but it has these pretty good sized flowers, four or five inches across, and it gives you all this kind of patterning, all this longitudinal sort of patterning in colors of yellow, orange, and sometimes they can get pretty red as well. But it's a, it's a beautiful, and it loves, it loves to make babies. It loves to make babies. If you're an orchid hybridizer, or you into growing the orchid plants, you know, well, you know why, right? The birds and the bees. <laughs> they love it. They follow it up. They are. Just, just, uh... Is it fragrant? No, Brigeria is not fragrant. No. No, it's not. This is a glandy, and I'm sure you guys, someone has. Uh, Tell me how you pronounce that? A glandy. Some I say a glandy. Other people say a glandier. A glandier. A glandier. But I like to leave out. I just say a glandier. You know, you could say a soft a glandier, a glandier kind of thing. But it's a glandy, very dark color. This is heavy, heavy, heavy dark crimson uh, and, and as you can see it's spotted and look at the lip it's like it has two lips right yes, it, it does. has one lip here and it has one another here. lip there yeah. that flower can be a large flower it could be five inches across okay the plant is not very big the plant is maybe i'm going to say maybe six inches tall at best it's a creeper so it creeps is really is really what it does very, it's a favorite plant to breed with, definitely. Excuse me. Any questions again? No? Okay, yes, let's, yeah, okay, let's go. Okay. You say they creep, you need a wider pot for that? They may not be taller, but they go wide, you need a wider pot? Yes, you do. Yes, for any orchid that's a creeper, uh, you definitely need a wide pot. I don't know, but you guys, you see, some plants, what they do, they creep and they follow the pot. You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Some orchids will creep, and this is the top, this is pot here. They'll creep along here, 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 here. Some would creep, but guess what they're going to do? Creep, tall, creep, tall, creep, tall. You see what I'm talking about? So they creep. But they creep going this way. Uh huh. Big difference. Because if you keep your watering pattern the same for the guys that go this way as you do the guys that go this way, huh? They go like, they'll let you know in a minute. In a minute, they do not like it at all. Why? Because the water, if you keep backfilling it with soil, right? You keep with 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 with, with your media. You backfill it, backfill it. The plant's gonna say, I'm not supposed to grow this way. I'm out of here. <laughs> okay, it's gonna tell you a thing or two. This is Cattleya luviola, very, very popular uh, species for when you wanna make a cross. Uh, a yellow, particularly, it is dominant, very dominant. This plant can get up to maybe five, this is probably the tallest amongst all that I've shown you. It, this can get up to probably six inches, no doubt. It's friendly. Very friendly, it'll grow all the way from St. Augustine all the way to the Keys. Uh, it is fragrant and it is a very good parent. And you see that green that's in the center? That's absolutely beautiful and it's dominant as well. Look. See it? Yeah. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, I showed you some uh, 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 species. Uh, no doubt, and the inherited traits to watch as we go through the next uh, set of slides, if we, we look at color and we try to figure out, huh, what parent that's coming from, and then we'll go to flatness, how flat that flower is. That's very important. Why? The birds and the bees, right? Isn't it easy to have a nice, great, big old, big old mouth where you're screaming and shouting? Right? You can attract so many pollinators. 
the shape of the paddles on the left. Well, it so happens that the left is a landing point. It's an airport, actually. So where bees and insects, they plop on there and they, you know, they fuss around and then they go into the flower and they pop it. It's good. You guys, have you had the euglossine bees? We have them in Lauderdale. And goodness, they will populate on a flower? Oh my goodness, they'll kill the flower like in a day or so. They're that, that, uh, they're that prevalent. And then we'll see how similar the hybrids are to the parents. And did we achieve what we wanted to want to achieve? So let's go here. Oh. Huh. And this is mini purple. And we saw, remember the plant that we saw that I said to you, look at the flower. It's, it was in a clay pot when we looked at it. And I said, it's big. The flower was bigger than the pot. This is, the, this is it here. Wow. See it here, the pot? Wow. Right? We made a cross with it. We took Walker Rihanna and we hooked it up onto Pumala. Look what we got. We got a darker red or pink, if you want to call it, deep pink. Uh, the lip no longer has this big split in it. You see that big spot? It's reduced, pretty much. The lip is nice and open here, uh, as we're looking at the flower. And there is no distance between where you can see the dorsal. It's closed it up. That's what what Rihanna does, actually. <laughs> But I mean, if in case you were doubtful and say, well, what, 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 where is its, its heritage? Well, you could definitely see Pumala in there, can't you? The color is rich enough you could see it for sure. So, although we didn't get a straight, a straight, clean Pumala, we got very close to it. And we got an excellent, excellent color. This plant is awarded mini purple. It's got several awards. I'm going to say it has, this may have as much as maybe 20 awards or so. So it's highly, okay, you go. It's highly desirable. And here we go. Remember that little guy? You can hardly see that thing in, the, in, 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 in a two or three inch pot. Well, look what it blew up to be. <laughs> Look, beautiful as it could be. Darker color, right? The lip basically kind of stayed the same, no doubt. The lip stayed the same. The roundness of the petals, that moved over to the hybrid itself. And then, remember we talked about, I showed you guys that yellowing that was going on in the lip? It's appearing. It's appearing as a background color here, you see? Even the hybrids that we're looking at as we speak. Folks, the plant is still a small plant. It may get up to maybe four inches, five inches tall or so, but uh, uh, the plant is, is a very small plant. I call it a window filler. It's, it's not even, it's quarter the size of this guy that's on the table here. You know, so as we go along and look at some of these hybrids, keep that in mind. For the space that a plant like that would occupy, you probably can grow three of these. That's the difference, basically. Let's look at some more. Okay. Remember we just saw Jongina, remember? Yeah. So we just showed Jongina and we showed press dance as well. Mm -hmm. This is the end result. A much rounder in the petals, way, way, way around the flower. It, it stayed, it actually stayed Jongina, where, remember we had that yellowing again that we see yeah. in the lip? It stayed that way as well. The plant size really didn't come up at all. As a matter of fact, the plant got smaller 
producing these, these wonderful pastel uh, paints. I turned around and I made a cross with it. It got awarded last December. 84 points. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Tony, when you cross and, and create hybrids, do they eventually go back to the uh, species that they were that they were brought from? In other words, when you cross them, can they go back to their parents? Uh, some of them will look very close. The thing about when you make a cross. The diversity is so great. You will get some looking like the father, some looking like the mother, some looking like the cousin, some looking like the cousin's father. So, I mean, it, 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 you know, it, it, it gets crazy. Some of them would be tall, some of them would be short. Like you said, some would try to go back. So they would look almost identical. Uh, and sometimes you do have to wonder, how could we tell if there is a real cross that looks identical? One way you can tell, they always bloom with their parent. So they would bloom with parent A, okay? If that parent A is dominant and it would look almost identical like A, but then you have questions in your mind. You're going to go, did I mess up? <laughs> so you look at the other parent. You look at the other parent, uh, uh, you know, and you will see some very soft similarities in the, in the progeny, uh, in the progeny, in the plant. In this case, this was really, really odd because we have no bilier here. And remember this guy? Remember we said the lines on this guy made it different than Walkeriana? Okay? So remember this guy, and then we hooked it up, this guy with Anakagi, which is a hybrid. Well, ate him up. Because this doesn't look anything like that except for the color. That's all you could really say. The yellowing is not here, that's for sure. This lip doesn't have this large V at the end of it, um, for sure. The only thing these two really have in common, if you weren't uh, really sure, is that they sell, they're only about four to five inches tall. So if it were, if, if, if a male man was involved, oops, I didn't see male man. Oops, I shouldn't say that. But, <laughs> if the, <laughs> folks, um, well, sometimes it happens, you know? I mean, you know, you, you mean well, and you take in pollen from one flower, and you put it on to the next one, and then you get a, a, a phone call, right? And you get all, blah, 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 okay. And you end up talking for 10 minutes or so. In the meantime, the birds, and, the birds already got you. <laughs> so we could call the bird a mailman, right? I mean... <laughs> So by the time you look to, you know, make the cross and put on pollen, so the idea is go, the, the flower is going like, eh, listen, no, don't bother me anymore. I want to relax, okay? Uh, <laughs> and, and, and really, that's it. So sometimes they can appear to be really, really strong parentage, and sometimes they're not. Let's take a look at some more. Okay. Okay, so this is, uh, this is an inter interesting one too, because you can see the yellow moved over, right? The bleeding moved over, you see that? Yes. You see how the bleeding moved over? Yes. Uh, you know, the lip, however, did not. This has a nice good old lip that comes straight down. This got pushed back. So it got pushed back by this guy here, yeah. you see? is what uh, really happened. But folks, this plant is only about four inches, five inches tall. That's all it is. And it gets covered with them. Mm -hmm. Covered with them. So uh, again, small plant. 
large flower you're going to save on repotting. I'm warning you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at this one. And this is this is Rosa de Corrientes, Walkeriana, at times with Tegiana. This is a cross that I made. It got awarded as well. Uh, and and you can see some of the similarities here. Again, you can see the color bleeding here. It inherited that, and the color here is breeding a good uh, a bleeding. It's way, way, way uh, darker. That's because I used Walkeriana, and the Walkeriana. Remember, we saw that Walkeriana early in the presentation. Yes, is dominant. It's only like so tall. I think I have one over there. I think it may be gone, but anyway. Um, it's, it's only so tall, but boy, is that a dominant plant. It wants to run the world. Let me tell you. But beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And small again. This, uh, this plant is only about so tall, tall. That's all it is. Large flower. Very, very large flower. Uh, this is a good one too. And this is, remember we talked about, uh, you know, the, 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 the kind of don't feel sorry for me plant, right? Uh, the, this is only about so tall. And if it carried the flowers somewhere down in here, you're going to go, eh. And the bee who's flying across is going to go, eh. So the plant, hey, you know, the plant's got to eat. Something got to happen. So what happens is it pushes these, these, these tall inflorescence up and it gives you a bunch of flowers there as if to say, well, you know, I'm trying to make up. This is Repasteris. And you can see Sunua is the orange one. Remember where? Remember that little orange one I showed yes. you previously? Okay. Well, Sunua didn't win. That's for sure. Repastris just totally dominated it. Yeah. And look how pretty it is. Very, very pretty. Very pretty. Yeah, let's uh, move down and move up a little. Okay. So here's one. Uh, that I made again. It got awarded. Mr. It, it, yes, it's got 84 points. Uh, God bless her soul. My mother, she passed uh, two years ago. But anyway, this is Jean Guiena. Remember Jean Guiena that we saw? Yes. That I said was extremely flat and had that yellow in the throat. So that came, came through. You can see it here too. That came through with a little, little bit of uh, color from the other parent. That's a small plant. Plant is only like so big, the flowers are that big. The flowers are almost six inches across. They're that big. Really, really beautiful, beautiful plant. Let's go. Oh, you're going to remember this one. Remember that one? Yes. Remember Brigarai? Yes. That's well, well. Here's Pole Star. So it's Brigarai onto Coxin. You remember Coxin here? That yes. Big old red one? Red one. Okay, so this is what it did. So, so, so remember we talked about the little guy? Remember we talked about a, a little guy having, you know, sort of an attitude? This is one that has an attitude. It's going to run right over you no matter what you do. Uh, okay, uh, this is Brabantier, a Clandy, onto Lodigizii. Again, remember Clandy, the very dark, dark, dark one? Uh, we put it on, here you go. A glandy was this one? Yeah. You put it onto a pink and look what you got. Oh, you got a lot, a lot of spotting, right? Plant is a small plant. Maybe six inches tall. That's about it. Uh, it's not going to get much taller than that. Okay, here we go. This is the last slide of pics. And this is, remember Shillariana? I talked about the white edging on it. Well, look. Look what happened. It moved right over. Keeping the same plant size, you're getting so much diversity of color and form and spotting and fragrance. And it goes on and on and on. Not as heavily spotted as its parent, but still slightly spotted. And you, you get that hood kind of thing happening. And uh, 
you know, a great, great, great pet. So guys, look out for your cats uh, the four inches, two inches, five inches. You can get a lot of diversity and color as well. Many cats, sometimes I call them patio cats, colorful reward without the annual, you know, sometimes I just kind of hate summer because I just know the repotting I got to do, right? So Hi. they could be windowsill is grown and we're going to wrap it up and say any questions and I thank you all. Thank you.